Hey everyone, it's the Eclectic Handyman here today replacing this evaporator fan motor on this GE French door fridge. Let's get it fixed. Alright, this is not a full diagnostics video, assuming you're already ready to replace this fan and have the part. Just as a reminder, you want to look at the model number and the best thing to do is go online to something like a repair clinic or such, enter this in, find out the correct part number, part shop around, get the best deal. I got a GE original part off of Amazon, great, good to go. Again, what's normally reminiscent of this being bad, again, not a full diagnostic video, is usually this fan, which is right back in here, makes a lot of racket, sounds like the bearings are going bad, it's pretty audible from the outside. The other thing that's indicative of it is that your refrigerator is not cooling, but the freezer is working. And that's because this fan blows the cold air up and through. It comes out and then it surrounds all in your refrigerator. So if you've already done the diagnostic and you know that this needs to be replaced, this is very trivial to get it done. All right, let's start disassembling things and get that replaced. First step, let's go ahead and unplug the refrigerator. All right, the only tools you're gonna to need today to do the repair, getting started. First off, you need the repair part, a quarter inch socket and socket extension, and either a power tool like this Craftsman Impact Wrench, or you can just use a socket wrench. I recommend quarter inch tools because the screws that we'll be taking out are screwed into plastic and they're not very um, robust, so you don't wanna use anything too powerful. That's it, let's get in there and get going. All right, we need to remove these cold storage drawers. They just come right out on their own. Not difficult to do and set them aside. Be careful with them. They are plastic. If you bang them into something or accidentally slip out of your hands and crack, sometimes they get discontinued for older models. So again, just handle with care. All right, next we want to remove this glass shelf. It just pops out like the other glass shelves if you lift up on it. The glass, you got to be careful, kind of secure it with your hands because it's loose in there. It's not a solid piece. Again, put it to the side, handle with care. All right, we're almost all ready to it. We haven't removed any of the bolts, but, but when you remove this plastic cover, which just comes off from the back, there's the harness from the fan. So we're already getting close. All right, uh, one other note real quickly. Your model might be slightly different, but the engineering and the implementation of these are all the same. So you might have a shelf in a different place or something like that, but overall the process and where the fan exists should be relatively the same. You can use parts diagrams online to figure out your exact method, but any of the models that are specific to this, you should be able to follow this exactly. All right, I've got two quarter inch Screws right here to take out. Again, you can use, I do it nice and slow. You can use a socket wrench if you choose to. Pull them out. That'll give us access to take off this. And there's a harness behind this because of the button, so I'm just gonna lay it to the side for now. But this back piece can come off. All right, next up, the fan is housed right here and the evaporator coils are right here. The one mistake you don't want to do is just take out these bolts and try to pull this plastic piece out without taking these two side covers off. And the reason being is you will damage the coils back there. It's only two extra bolts and they're really easy to get to. You just need an extension. All right, so we'll come over here. Got one off. And on the right hand side, you are welcome to just go ahead and disconnect the harness. Let me show you it a little bit closer. So the harness for that board with the temperature settings, it just push it with your finger and then this way you can get this plate out of the way. And now we can get that second bolt out. And then these slide back. There's actually a post right here. So they just slide back. And easy does it. I'm gonna catch that screw, and it's right here. Really easy to do. We'll go to the other side, slide it back, get that screw out, and put that to the side. Next up, there are five more quarter inch screws up top. It's 
So I'm going to take out each one. Making sure not to drop them down somewhere where you can't get it. I got all five. I'm going to take them out of the fridge. All right, now we can pull this up and off. And remember, you've got coils behind you, so be gentle. So I'm going to kind of use this side. I'm just going to kind of, okay, being very gentle. Pulling up, and there we go. There is one harness on the left that you can, if you need to, to get it out of the way, you can just disconnect. I'm going to rest this to the side as well. All right, so here's the fan that we're replacing. And actually, you can get to this harness behind that plastic cover while the refrigerator is in operation as a test. If it's making a bunch of racket, as I mentioned, you can simply just pull the harness out. And if it stops making that noise, odds are that that thing needs to be replaced. But once we pull this out, it's routed right back here through that little plastic piece. You'll want to take one wire out at a time and be gentle with it because that plastic is brittle. And then this is going to pull directly out. There we go. All right, the old fan will have this rubber insulator around it. Make sure to peel that off. It does not come with the new one. And we will install it on the new one as well. Just pops right on, taking note of the tab orientation and the wires. There we go. All right, we'll slide it back in. Same orientation as before. We will route these wires under that plastic piece, plug the harness back in, and we're done. We've replaced the evaporator motor. When you reinstall everything, which installation is just the reverse, take great care in putting this cover on, not to damage those coil fins. Be very careful, take your time, and you should be all set. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Check out the other videos on the channel. And until next time, this is the Eclectic Candyman. We'll see you later.